to the Brennick Channels back, and today we are talking about Lake Mead. As a matter of fact, Lake Mead and California water system in general, today the Biden administration announced Monday that seven western states had reached an agreement to conserve critical California water system supply aimed to severe drought and condition. The agreement reached by the so-called lower basin states, Arizona, California, and Nevada, ensured that at least 3 million acre feet or 978 billion gallons of Colorado River water supplies are conserved by 2027 according to the Department of Interior, which has worked with states to address shortages. Under the plan, at least half of that amount will be conserved by 2025. So they're talking about 1.5 in the next two years that the water will be saved. So not this water year coming up, but the following water year, they will start conserving 1.5 million gallons. And this is a step in the right direction that we have been advocating for on this channel for quite a long time, that they're just taking too much water. It's not so much the people that are taking the water that's causing the problem. There are 40 million people, seven states, and 30 tribal nations who rely on the electricity from the Colorado Basin for basic services such as drinking water and electricity. And it's not the 40 million people that are using this water. It's a lot of agriculture that uses the water. And California, even though they're the largest state, they take the majority of the water from the Colorado River. The other states combined don't take as much as California does. So it's not a California thing in general, but California is working on other ways to save water. So that's fantastic. They're actually working towards this and doing things to make it happen and we are getting ready to hit a big time El Nino and this is really really interesting they are talking this could be the doozy of the doozies and be a super El Nino but that doesn't always mean that there's going to be rain in the west just because it's a super El Nino as we've seen this year it was at a neutral and we got pounded with a bunch of rain it really just depends on where that jet stream in general usually if you're looking at it as we're looking here at this split El Nino could possibly hit and it could be really wet here but there's been other El Ninos where it hasn't been wet at all and then here's another pattern for El Nino in 2015 there was spotty rain and thunderstorms but usually it's mild in the winter time very cold up here in Montana and and the storms over here as well so you have to be watching that El Nino really 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 changes all the time you just never know what you're going to get really just depends on where the jet stream ends up going so does it go further south does it go further north you just never know what the heck's going to happen and if it doesn't you know you don't know what what will happen so generally like i said it's wet down like in mexico and to the south because this jet stream stays there it's warm up in alaska which is warm for winter time is a little bit different and drought more over towards the mississippi river valley so you just never know what you're going to get with el nino it could go any way it really just depends on what happens to the jet stream just because it's an el nino don't mean it's going to be wet we hope it'll be wet but we don't know for sure until it gets here because the weather is really hard to predict while we are talking about it the last several days i have been looking as we go out to windy.com you can see that a lot of precipitation has been falling look at this over utah it is raining and i have i predicted this back in january i predicted that this would possibly happen and the reason why is because there's so much moisture in the the ground that when the sun heats it up it has nowhere to go but up whenever it's humid it rains and you get into the mountains where it's cold and you get uplift from the heat from the desert and well, let's go check out the temperatures and i'll show you what i'm talking about you can see that it's cool up here warm down here and with all that happening you get thunderstorms let's go back to the radar and i'll show you what i'm talking about you go we go back to the radar and you can see where it's cool it's raining and where that's where that uplift is and this is great the great salt lake because there's a ton of precipitation up here that's all flowing into there and then you got the colorado river on top of it starts right around here the basin's right around here and it goes down just up by st george so all this right here is caught in the last couple days it's been raining a ton down here yesterday the day before before it was raining down here all that rain flows into the Colorado River which ultimately ends up in Lake Mead and it's causing Lake Mead to jump up a little bit as well so any precipitation you get is a good thing regardless so 
is this new snow? I'm going to say probably not with looking back at the temperatures. I only see 40s. So this is all rain. This is not no new snow whatsoever. We go to the rain accumulation and this is what we get. You can see that it's spotty at best on the European model. We go to the GFS and you can see that they're calling for more wide swath, almost an inch of rain. And we go the next five days and you can see one inch. We go the next 10 days and they're still talking about 2.13 inches possibly here by the Great Divide. And we will see if that ultimately ends up happening. It's just really hard to say. Cortez down here, 1.9. They're saying over in Page, 0.2, not much, but I, I disagree with that because it's already raining there. Like over at St. George in the Canab, they're getting precipitation right now. It's going to probably equal more than 0.04. So be mindful if you're living out that way. Be careful out there, y'all. And let's go check and see what the current water level is at Lake Mead right now. Before we go down to Lake Mead, I want to start over here at Lake Powell Water Data com and using there tonight because I'm just busy and I haven't had a chance to update my graphs. So look at these inflows. They have just continued to increase over and over and over. You're at 71,000, 0.71 CFS coming in. That's getting up there. It's almost three quarters of 100,000. Like it's really, really, really good. And it's really good for the water levels. And they're only letting out 17,000 of this. So that's a net positive. And check this out. Over 14 days, this lake has come up 15.4 feet and look at all these there was one day in the last 14 that was less than a foot and that was sunday may 14 2023 which was 95 and that's incredible and look at this down here compared to last year 19.02 negative 12.69 negative 55.50 from 2020 negative 33.45 from 2019 and you can see all these down here and you can see if you guys are talking about using boat ramps Yes. <laughs> I don't know how many people do, but you can see that they're starting to really bullfrogs open already and antelopes. These haven't been open for a long time, for a very long time. So this is really good. And you can see that it won't be too much longer. And some of these other ones will be open as well. You're 1.65 below. Looking bad, not likely. Go very slow, it says at bullfrogs. Burr. And then Halls Crossing, you're still a little ways away. You're, you're about 8.65 feet below. So that could possibly come up in the next 10 or 15 days possibly and then another couple months before these other ones start to open and you're a long way from these other ones hitting up but anybody that you know goes boating or whatever you guys if you have a small boat you can probably get away with using bullfrog spur and also you can see that it's a 28.46 so it's starting to come up and look they've already released 61.69 percent of the minimum 7 million 500 and if, if they take out another 1.5 million acre feet by 2025 that's this number is only going to be 6 million so so that's incredible that is good news and it's going to retain a lot of water you're going to see these levels start to increase but on the bright side there's still two trillion two hundred fifty five billion six hundred and seventy four million five hundred and eighty three thousand eight hundred and twelve gallons of water at lake powell currently so that's pretty impressive and you could see that even the snowfall up in the the mountains for this day is still at 123.78% up above. Total precipitations 115.68. That's why you continue to see these inflows continue to increase. So we will take it down to Lake Mead. We go next. As we are at Lake Mead, you can see that they're still, they'll only be releasing 7,500 in the next two years because they released 9 million acre feet and they are 51.82% of the minimum required. So that has to stay in effect till the end of this water year. The article was very unclear if they were going to save some water next year, but they didn't really say one way or another. You can see that the current reading on this site says 1,052.61 May 21st, 2023. And this site's always a day behind. So we'd have to go to the other one. You can see that Lake Mead is finally over 30.42% full. So that's fantastic news. And they are at 7,872,580 is your content. So you take that number and you take this number and you divide it and then you times it by 100 and you get 30.42. And that's how I come up with those numbers. If my math is correct, if I'm going off memory, but I think that's how you go about it. You can see that they already released 4,663,500 
536 acre feet and you can see that their inflows are 21,000 and they're only releasing 17,000 from Lake Powell so that means that they're getting more inflows from somewhere else. They're getting an extra 5,000 CFS from somewhere else because they're only releasing 17 from upstream so that's good news. It's always good when that comes up and you can see that Lake Mead is up 1.19 feet. Now you got to remember Lake Powell is retaining quite a bit of water right now so as it usually does but this is pretty good news. I haven't seen Lake Mead be positive for the last 14 days and let's go look at the current water level on the other site that I use. Here we are at Lake Mead and you can see that it's up 0.1 feet in the last 24 hours according to this site. This is 1052.75. This was Monday, May 22nd, 2023 at 3 p.m. The level is 176.25 feet below full pool of 1229. So we continue to go on. I want to go down to Havasu for my friends down there and that'll be the final stop tonight. I don't have a lot of time. I got other things going on today so I just one to hop on here and do a real quick update and you can see Lake Havasu is always up and down every day it just that's the way it is there that's the life of Lake Havasu and you can see that 4.48.21 feet MSL Monday May 22nd 2023 at 3 p.m. the level is 3.21 feet above full pool of 445 changes since yesterday 0.18 and that is what we got going on thank you guys for stopping by I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you on the next one God bless